Terraforming Mars is one of humanity's most ambitious visions, aiming to transform the barren, hostile landscape of the Red Planet into an environment that can support human life. This concept goes beyond science fiction, representing a monumental step in our ability to engineer planetary ecosystems. The core idea is to make Mars more Earth-like by modifying its atmosphere, temperature, and surface conditions to create an environment capable of sustaining life. While this task seems almost insurmountable, humanity's advances in technology and understanding of planetary science are making this vision increasingly plausible. The ultimate goal of terraforming is not just survival, but also the expansion of human civilization into new worlds, ensuring our long-term presence in the cosmos. Mars presents numerous obstacles that make it uninhabitable for humans in its current state. Its thin atmosphere, composed of over 95% carbon dioxide, has a surface pressure less than 1% that of Earth's, making it incapable of supporting liquid water or breathable air. Temperatures on the planet range from chilly lows of minus 125 degrees Celsius in winter to highs around 20 degrees Celsius near the equator during summer days, with an average temperature of minus 60 degrees Celsius. Additionally, Mars lacks a protective magnetic field, leaving its surface exposed to harmful solar radiation and cosmic rays, which are deadly to unshielded life forms. Despite these challenges, the planet holds potential for transformation. Its polar ice caps and underground layers contain significant amounts of water ice, and its gravity, though weaker than Earth's, is sufficient to retain a thicker atmosphere if one could be artificially created. Raising Mars' temperature is a crucial step in making the planet habitable. One of the most discussed methods involves utilizing its vast reserves of frozen carbon dioxide found in the polar ice caps and regolith. By melting and sublimating this CO2, a greenhouse effect could be initiated, trapping heat and warming the planet. Large orbital mirrors, strategically positioned to reflect concentrated sunlight onto the polar regions, could accelerate this process by directly heating the ice. Another approach involves the deliberate release of potent greenhouse gases, such as perfluorocarbons, which could be manufactured on Mars or transported from Earth. These gases are highly effective at trapping infrared radiation, significantly enhancing the warming effect. As the temperature rises, dormant water ice would also begin to melt, releasing additional water vapor into the atmosphere and amplifying the greenhouse cycle. The formation of a water cycle is essential for creating a self-sustaining environment on Mars. As the planet warms, the melting of water ice in the polar caps and the subsurface layers would release significant amounts of water vapor into the thin atmosphere. This vapor could eventually condense into clouds, leading to precipitation in the form of rain or snow depending on the regional temperatures. Over time, this process might lead to the creation of rivers, lakes, and even shallow seas in areas where water could collect. However, the current atmospheric pressure on Mars is too low for liquid water to exist on the surface for extended periods. To address this, the pressure would need to be increased alongside temperature allowing for the stable presence of water in liquid form. Establishing a water cycle not only contributes to the planet's habitability, but also sets the stage for biological processes, such as photosynthesis, that are necessary for life to thrive. 
Increasing Mars atmospheric pressure is a fundamental step in making it a suitable environment for life. The current atmosphere, with its low pressure and composition mainly of carbon dioxide, is unable to support liquid water or provide the necessary conditions for human survival. To create a stable atmosphere capable of sustaining life, significant amounts of additional gases must be introduced. CO2 will play a crucial role, as it is a potent greenhouse gas that can contribute to warming the planet and thickening the atmosphere. However, simply increasing CO2 levels won't be enough on its own. One key component of Earth's atmosphere that Mars lacks is nitrogen, which accounts for nearly 78% of our atmosphere. Nitrogen helps to stabilize the atmosphere, preventing oxygen from becoming too concentrated and reactive. Extracting nitrogen from Martian soil or importing it from asteroids could provide the necessary boost. Additionally, Water vapor will also be essential to increase the atmospheric pressure and support a viable water cycle. By releasing these gases, the atmosphere would gradually thicken, raise the pressure, and create the conditions for liquid water to exist on the surface. Over time, this would make Mars more Earth-like, creating a platform for more complex life forms to thrive. Without a protective magnetic field, Mars is vulnerable to solar radiation and cosmic rays, which make the surface a hostile environment for life. On Earth, our magnetic field acts as a shield, protecting our atmosphere from being stripped away by solar wind. Mars, however, lost its magnetic field billions of years ago contributing to the loss of its original atmosphere. To terraform Mars, a similar form of protection must be established to preserve any atmosphere that is artificially created. One of the most widely discussed solutions is to create an artificial magnetic shield, which would involve placing a large magnetic field generator at the Lagrange point one, the stable point between Mars and the Sun. This shield would redirect solar wind and protect the Martian atmosphere from being eroded. Although this idea is still in the early conceptual stages, it presents a promising option for safeguarding the atmosphere. An alternative approach could involve creating localized shields using ionization or particle beam systems. These would generate a protective barrier around the planet's surface, deflecting harmful radiation and allowing for the development of a habitable environment. Regardless of the method used, developing a radiation protection system is crucial for maintaining the long-term viability of a terraformed Mars. Once Mars' atmosphere and temperature are in a state that can support liquid water, the next critical step in terraforming is introducing life. To begin this process, microorganisms capable of surviving in the harsh Martian environment would be the first candidates. Genetically engineered bacteria, such as cyanobacteria, are prime candidates for this task. Cyanobacteria are known to thrive in extreme environments on Earth, such as acidic hot springs and frozen tundra, making them ideal for Mars cold and low pressure conditions. These bacteria would use photosynthesis to produce oxygen, gradually contributing to the buildup of breathable air in the Martian atmosphere. As oxygen levels increase, more complex forms of plant life could be introduced, which would rely on the oxygen generated by the cyanobacteria to carry out photosynthesis. Over time, plants would help further stabilize the atmosphere by absorbing CO2 and releasing oxygen, continuing the cycle of life that would eventually lead to the formation of ecosystems. 
Introducing higher life forms, such as insects and small animals, could be a future step in the process, creating a truly Earth-like biosphere on Mars. This phase of terraforming would be a delicate process, with careful monitoring of each stage to ensure the stability of the environment as it gradually becomes more hospitable to life. The time scale for terraforming Mars is a major challenge. While there are many theoretical models and ideas for how to accomplish this monumental task, the time required for significant results could span centuries or even millennia. For example, the process of releasing gases to thicken the atmosphere, trigger a greenhouse effect, and warm the planet could take hundreds of years. The creation of a stable hydrological cycle with rivers, lakes, and seas would require millennia to establish. The introduction of life forms, particularly plants and microorganisms, would also take centuries to fully transform the Martian landscape. Even if the initial phases of terraforming were to succeed, the gradual development of ecosystems capable of supporting more complex organisms would take considerable time. Current efforts in space exploration and planetary science are focused on studying Mars' environment and exploring ways to use its resources to facilitate this process. Technologies such as robotic mining, resource extraction, and even the establishment of permanent colonies will be necessary to prepare for terraforming. While we are still in the early stages of understanding how to alter the Martian environment on a large scale, the first steps are already being tested through scientific missions and research. The dream of transforming Mars into a habitable world is still far from realization, but the foundation for this extraordinary undertaking is being laid. While much of the discussion around terraforming Mars focuses on gradual processes, there are more radical proposals aimed at accelerating the transformation. One of the most talked about approaches comes from Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, who has suggested that detonating nuclear bombs over the Martian poles could jumpstart the terraforming process. According to Musk's idea, detonating these bombs would release enormous amounts of heat, vaporizing the CO2 trapped in the Martian ice caps and sending it into the atmosphere. This sudden influx of greenhouse gases could dramatically warm the planet and begin the process of thickening the atmosphere. While this method sounds extreme, Musk argues that it could be a highly effective way of speeding up the process of warming Mars, as it would bypass the slow and gradual methods currently being studied. However, this proposal raises significant ethical, environmental, and technical concerns. The potential for catastrophic effects such as unpredictable changes in the Martian climate or damage to the atmosphere, makes this method highly controversial. Additionally, the long-term consequences of introducing so much heat and radiation to the planet are largely unknown. Despite these concerns, Musk's plan highlights the ambitious thinking needed to consider solutions for transforming Mars. Whether nuclear detonations are the answer or not, it is clear that terraforming Mars will require groundbreaking ideas and unprecedented levels of innovation, testing the boundaries of both science and human ambition. So, what do you think about the idea of terraforming Mars? Do you believe it's a real possibility for the future, or is it just a science fiction dream? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more exciting content, and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.